guest. Uh, welcome to this book launch event, which will roughly take us around two hours. Uh, my name is Sir. I'm Dr. Judith Wanda. I'm a lecturer and the director of international relations at St. Augustine University of Tanzania. To begin our event, I would like to welcome your Lordship, uh, Stephen Msomba, to start with a word of prayer. Kwa jina la baba na la mwana wa mtakatifu Mungu baba mwenyezi na kuja mbele yako wakati huu tunakuomba uwe nasi katika shughuli yetu hii tunayoianza tuongoze kwa roho mtakatifu ili tuyafanye yote kwa sifa na utukufu wa jina lako tunaomba hayo kwa njia ya Kristo bwana wetu kwa jina la baba na la mwana wa mtakatifu Ladies and gentlemen, protocol observed. I would like to welcome all of us to stand for a, a minute of silence for our, our late President John Pombe Magufuli. Thank you. May his soul continue resting in peace. I would like to now welcome Professor Bertram Mapunda to do the introduction and also give an opening remarks. Thank you. Uh Dr. Judith, for your introduction and welcome. Uh, before I get uh, to my introductory remark, let me make a, a note of recognition to those who are present with us. We have uh, our guest of honor who is being uh, represented by his lordship, Stephen Msomba, Auxiliary Bishop of uh, the Archdiocese of Dar es Salaam, who is seated at the center. We have uh, the author of the book, uh, the reason of which we are here. This is none other than Professor Malango uh, Chitenga, who is also a director of academic affairs, research and publication, University of Hebron, Malawi. We have uh, Ambassador Professor Costa Ricky Maharu, the Vice Chancellor of Sauti Mwanza, who is also uh, here with uh, uh, his wife present in the audience. Uh, we have uh, Sabato Nyamsenda uh, from the University of Dar es Salaam, who is seated at the left end of the uh, stage and is going to uh, talk a bit about the book and about the author. We have uh, Mr. Matthias Kabadi seated next to me on my left. Uh, is a book writer from Dar es Salaam. Is uh, also going to talk about what surrounds uh, the late Magufuli in connection with the main event of, the, uh, of today. We have uh, Mr. Ngusa Samike, uh, former controller from State House. We have uh, Professor Francis Matambalia, 
a friend of uh, Saudi with us in the audience. We have uh, Ms. Chisomo Chintenga, who is seated in the audience. This is the wife of the author. She's come to see what is happening uh, for the labor the two of them had in Malawi up to the end of uh, the result. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Joshua Matelewele, uh, is also from Malawi, is acting student, uh, <coughs> president of the uh, Student Union of Hebron University in Malawi, who is going to give a poem, but also give a short uh, speech related to the work. Uh, we have uh, uh, Professor Osaki, uh, who is uh, from the Saudi University, but also uh, working with TEC, Tanzania Episcopal Conference, uh, as a quality assurer. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Mbogo, director of uh, the Da Center of Saudi. Uh, and we have, uh, I see in the audience, Dr. Kamata, uh, from the University of Dar es Salaam. We have uh, representative from publishers, Mkuki Nanyota. I can see my old friend there. Uh, yeah, we have uh, several other uh, authors and publishers in the audience mainly from uh, Dar es Salaam, but we have also media people. Uh, I don't have a clear list of those who are uh, present, but I believe we have uh, uh, several uh, media, probably uh, our facilitator and MC will uh, recognize them at uh, a later point. So that is uh, uh, the list of those who are with us. And I would like, uh, on behalf of uh, Saudi uh, University and Saudi family, uh, welcome you all and thank you for coming. It is indeed uh, an important event. Uh, for us uh, in the Saudi family that we uh, hold this uh, book launch here in Dar es Salaam. This event also uh, took place in Mwanza, but we found that it is important that we bring this important book and important author to Dar es Salaam as well. The reason that uh, we do this is that uh, uh, here we have uh, an African scholar from Malawi uh, who found the importance, the contribution of uh, the late Magufuli, uh, the president, former president of uh, uh, Tanzania, who did not do whatever he did just for Tanzania, as we may think of. But what he did uh, for Tanzania had a serious impact, reflection beyond Tanzania. And uh, the author of this book that is going to be launched here today is one of the witnesses of those uh, from uh, uh, Africa who actually appreciated the contribution that Magufuli had uh, not only to Tanzania but to other parts of the world. And indeed for those who are going to have uh, uh, 
a chance to read the book, and I would encourage everyone to read, you'll find how enriching it is. And most important, it will uh, show what we are supposed, all of us, the African, the sons and daughters of Africa, what we are supposed to do for our, uh, our continent, for our countries. Because uh, as we are all aware that, uh, and the book says so, that colonialism is still there. Uh, we tend to think that uh, we are safe now, almost 60, 70 years after the end of political colonialism. And the book says, no, it's not true. Uh, it is still there. And let us not think that we have uncles, as Nyerere used to say, wajomba. We don't have wajomba outside there who are going to come and uh, give us civilization, give us free help, give us free bread. No. Whatever we get, we'll have to pay, and in most cases, through our noses. So the book is reminding us of that that, uh, yes, we have, as Africans, uh, to stand, still to stand firm and go against whatever possibilities uh, of new colonialism, which especially now is standing for economic colonialism. So it is uh, this contribution of the book, this sense of reminding, particularly the youth, not the elders like myself and those older than me or about them. Our time is almost gone. But for the young people to know that actually colonialism is still lingering and is actually probably even worse than what was then. Because at that time, colonialism was visible. You can see a white person seated next to you, and you say, okay, get out, and I want to sit there. This is not your country. And that is what our fathers did when they were fighting colonialism. Today, it comes in a very sophisticated manner. And it's only few people uh, who can actually identify that and stand and fight against. And the author identifies one such African uh, person being Magufuli, and that's why he took time actually to uh, put the ideas together and use him as an icon, as an example of the kind of person that you can stand against uh, the modern form of colonialism. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, mine was to uh, introduce and say why uh, Saudi University found it uh, imperative and important that uh, uh, we have uh, the author to come and speak to the few of us on behalf of the others, but most importantly, to uh, give introduction to the book so that uh, we know its importance and whenever possible, we get hold of the book for our own advantage and advantage of those who are going to come. Uh, the guest of honor, ladies and gentlemen, that is what I wanted to share, and let us continue with our project. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us give uh, Professor Mapunda another round of applause.
Uh, thank you, Prof, for a good introduction. And we all now are aware that we are here not to just launch the book, but to understand about Africa Magufuli and Change, an integrated approach in abolishing Africa's modern economic slavery. Now, before we get to hear from the author, there are, uh, we are going to listen to our first presenter, who is going to talk about Magufuli's reign in resources mobilization in Tanzania. Will, uh, let us welcome Matthias Joseph Kabadi. Karibu. Mabibi na mabwana habari za jioni. Mnaendeleaje? Mbona mjachangamka? <laughs> Matakio mchangamke bwana. Kama nilivyotambulishwa mimi naitwa Matias Kabadi. Mjasiri ya mali lakini ni mwandishi wa vitabu. E, nimepewa nafasi ya kuzungumza hapa kuhusu aliyekuwa rais wetu wa ya tano hayati Dr. John Paul Magufuli Katika sehemu nitakayo kwenda kuizungumzia ni kuhusu nguvu yake katika kujenga uwezo wa rasilimali hapa Tanzania nguvu yake katika kujenga uwezo ya wa rasilimali katika nchi yetu hapa Tanzania Magufuli is reign in resource mobilization in Tanzania Kabla sijaendelea kuzungumza na ningependa kutoa utangulizi kidogo ili twende sawa Mimi kwa imani yangu ni Mkristo. Sisi katika Ukristo tunamwamini Bwana Yesu. Huyo Bwana Yesu katika Ukristo amepata kuzungumzwa na watu tofauti tofauti. Wanne. Katika injili ya Matayo injiri ya Marko, injiri ya Luka pamoja na injiri ya ya Yohana. Yesu katika kuzungumziwa na hao watu. Lakini pia kwenye imani ya Kiislamu. Yesu pia amezungumziwa kupitia Mtume Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kwenye surati Mariam pia nako Yesu amezungumziwa Sasa mnaweza mkajiuliza kwa nini nimepause hoja ya Yesu hapa maana nataka kujenga sasa hoja sitaki kumaanisha kwamba nataka kumlinganisha na Bwana Yesu Kristo lakini nataka kujenga hoja yangu katika tukio la leo la uzinduzi wa kitabu cha Africa Magufuli and Change hapa kuna somo la kujifunza moja kama Yesu angezungumziwa au kuandikwa na mtu mmoja pekee pengine dunia isingeamini ukuu wake na uwepo wake lakini kwa kuzungumziwa na watu tofauti tofauti sehemu tofauti tofauti mtu huyo huyo mmoja imetujengea imani sisi wana dunia kumuamini uwepo wake na ukuu wake pia. Nimeyasema haya kwa, ku, kwa kuunganisha sasa kwa hiki tulichokifanya leo hapa katika kuzungumzia vitabu au kitabu cha Hayati John Tom Magufuli. Nilipoandika kitabu chake kwa mara ya kwanza mwaka 2020, hiki kitabu hiki hapa kinaitwa Mjue Dr. John Tom Magufuli, Chimbuko Historia Siasa na Uongozi wake kilileta mashaka miongoni mwa Watanzania. 
kwamba pengine kitabu hiki yeye mwenyewe mhusika amehusika kuni, kunituma kukitengeneza hilo la kwanza na kila pili watu walihusisha na ukabila kwa sababu tunayemzungumza hapa alikuwa ni mkuu wa nchi ni rais wa nchi watu walimhusisha na ukabila wakahusisha kwamba labda mimi nimepitia kwake amenielekeza niandike kitabu hiki na watu walienda mbali wakasema mbona yalioko humu sio sawa sawa na profile ya mwandishi sasa leo nataka kujibu hizo hoja mbele yenu hapa waandishi wa habari na watu mlio kusanyika hapa kwamba kitabu hiki hayati dr john pomba kufuli hajahusika hata kwa chembe hata kidogo wala familia yake haijahusika hata mimi na yeye hatufahamiani kama ni kufahamiana ni katika namna ya uandishi wangu nilivyokamilisha na taarifa labda kumfikia pengine kwa hayo kwa hiyo naweza kusema kwamba e, zile zile assumption za watu ambao wa Tanzania wamekuwa wakiwa waki nazo sasa leo ni maamua kusolea hapa ufanuzi kwamba jambo hili John Paul Magufuli hakuhusika kilicho nivuta mimi ni zile falsafa zake tunamwandika magufuli sio kama mtu tunamwandika magufuli kama mkuu wa nchi ambaye alikuwa na falsafa zake za kiuongozi zilizotufanya sisi kama mimi na huyu mwandishi mwenzangu profesa Malango kupata nguvu ya kuandika mimi binafsi kilicho nisukuma kuandika hivyo baada ya kupata hizo falsafa zake nafikiri inawezekana nilikuwa mtu wa kwanza kumuelewa kwa hiyo kwa emotion intelligence zangu kwa akili hisia zangu niliamua kuingia kwenye kuandika kitabu hiki na ndipo nilikokamilisha mwaka 2020 kikaendelea kukwepo sasa baada ya kusema hayo niingie sasa kwenye nguvu yake ya kukusanya eh, katika kujenga na ku, na, ku, na ku resource katika Tanzania Rais Magufuli wakati wa uongozi wake cha kwanza alipoingia madarakani aliingia na falsafa moja kuu ambayo mimi nimeichanganua na, kui, na kuita falsafa ya KK4 KK4 ambazo ni kujitambua kusubutu kujiamini na kujisimamia hiyo falsafa pekee ndio iliyo mfanya watu wengi waliomuelewa waweze kumuelewa kwa kiwango hicho na mimi nikiwa mno uja wao alivotumia falsafa hii tumeona mambo mengi sana yametokea dr john pomba gufuli alikuwa akisema kwenye majukwaa ya kisiasa kila alichokisema kwenye majukwaa ya kisiasa kuhusu kuhudumia wananchi lakini alikitekeleza kama alivyokisema kwenye majukwaa ya, kis, ya kisiasa sio kama ambavyo wanasiasa wengine anaweza anatamka jambo kwa kuwalizisha wananchi kwenye majukwaa lakini kwenye utekelezaji inakuwa ni tofauti sasa magufuli hakuwa hivyo alikuwa ni mtendaji anatamka kwenye majukwaa ya kisiasa lakini anakwenda kwenye utekelezaji na matokeo tuliyaona na ndio maana mnaona mpaka sasa watu wengi wanajitokeza kumwandika na mimi nikiwepo lakini pia kama mimi pia kama mimi peke yangu ningeandika kitabu peke yangu bado watu wengeendelea kupata na mashaka kwamba labda hawa pengine walikuwa na jambo lao kama nilivyotangulia kusema huko mwanzo kwa hiyo kwa uandishi unaotokea sasa hivi na watu wengine tofauti tena kutoka nje ya nchi kama profesa Malango hapa maanake sasa tunasibilisha kwamba kumbe basi huyu mtu ambaye tulimwandika na mimi nikiwepo kama mtu wa kwanza tulikuwa na jambo ambalo ni la msingi kwa taifa tu kumwandika kama mtu. Tuliandika kwa maslahi ya taifa letu. Na hakuna kile ambacho tulikiandika au nilichokiandika mimi ambacho kiko nje ya utendaji wake. Kwa hiyo e, tuna, 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 tunaweza kuendelea kujifunza kwamba taifa letu linahitaji linahitaji viongozi wa aina hiyo kuendelea kuipeleka kusukuma gurudumu la maendeleo katika nchi yetu lakini pia na sisi wenyewe wananchi lazima tuendelee kuwasupport viongozi 
tusikae kuwategemea viongozi peke yake na sisi wenyewe tujitokeze kuendelea kuwasukuma na kuwasaidia viongozi kuwapa support ili waweze kufanya mazuri eh tumeona wakati wa hayati John Pombe Magufuli kuna mambo mengi sana yalitokea alipokuwa ameanza kutekeleza ile ilani ya chama cha mapinduzi wanasiasa <laughs> wanasiasa wamezoea wame kufikiria kwamba wananchi ukishamaliza kuzungumza kwenye jukwaa ukishuka hata usipotekeleza hawawezi kufuatilia lakini wakati wa awamu ya John Pombe Magufuli wananchi walikuwa nafuatilia wali, na walikuwa na uwezo wa kuhoji hata kwa kiongozi alioko juu wakahoji kwamba mbona mmetuahidi hiki hatujakiona kwa sababu ya kile kivuri cha hayati John Pombe Magufuli hata viongozi wengine walianza kujituma na kuanza kupeleka maendeleo kwa wananchi kwa kasi tumeona kwenye miradi ya kiuchumi miradi ya kimkakati ya kiuchumi standard gauge eh, bwawa la mwalimu nyerere uh, madaraja ya, ya kuondoa foreni katika miji mikubwa hasa hapa dar es salaam interchange kijazi pale daraja la mfugale na daraja la, la pale matai ya changombe yote hiyo bila kuwepo na msukumo wa kiongozi mwenye kutaka kuipeleka nchi mbali kwenye mafanikio ni vigumu kutekelezea kwa sababu watu hawataki kusimamia kwa majukumu yao lakini kwa uwezo wa rais magufuli aliweza kuwasimamia viongozi wa, wa viongozi wenzake na hayo yakafanyika kwa kiwango hicho tulicho kiona na tukaona kwamba kumbe inawezekana kutokana hiyo falsafa tu hiyo ya KK4 tukajua ndio tukaanza kugundua kwamba ah kumbe mambo yanawezekana kama kisimamiwa vizuri kabla ya hapo tulikuwa sisi tuko inferior sana tulikuwa tuko wanyonge sana kwamba huwezi kufanya kama mtu yuko juu sana unakuwa unamuona yuko juu huyo yani we unakuwa kama uko chini unakuwa una, una wasiwasi una mashaka tu kwamba labda ni yeye tu nikienda kwa nitakuwaje lakini alipokuja yeye akatubadilisha akatuambia tuachane na fikira za, 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 za uoga tujiamini tujisimamie tujitambue na tusubutu kufanya wa Tanzania wengi sana sasa hivi wamebadilika ni wako wanasubutu kufanya na mimi ni mmoja hapo kwa sababu mimi kama nisingekuwa ni, ni hiyo falsafa isingeniingia hiki kitabu hapa nisingeweza kukiandika nisingeweza kukiandika kwa sababu kilikuwa na mikingamo mingi sana mimi sio profesa sio doctor elimu yangu mimi ni kidato cha nne lakini hakuna mtu ambaye amesoma kitabu hiki intellectuals na nani akaanzia ukurasa wa kwanza paka wa mwisho asipige simu wengi wamekisoma wame kitabu hiki wanapiga simu kusema mbona profile yako huku na kilichomo akifanani ni hiyo KK4 ya Magufuli imefanya kazi kwa hiyo tunapomzungumza Magufuli yako mengi sana yako mzungumza ambayo amefanya katika taifa hili lakini sio taifa hili tu hata nje ya mataifa yetu tumeona rafiki yangu hapa ndugu yangu hapa mwandishi mwenzangu hapa profesa Malango yuko Malawi kule lakini kumbe alikuwa anaona anaangalia anaofanyika Tanzania yanamuingia anasema huyu jamaa it is a golden opportunity it is a golden a golden opportunity in Africa eh naye akaamua ngoja niandike tena yeye ni mwana ni mwana mwana taaluma akasema ngoja andike ameandika kitaaluma kwa hiyo mimi nasema tuendelee kumwandika Magufuli na tuendelee kuwa na imani na watu ambao wanamwandika kwamba hawamwandiki for personal interest wanamwandika kwa kuwagusa katika aidha maisha yao ama katika utaifa na mambo mengineyo kama hayo tuliona kwenye kwenye ugonjwa kwenye kunyesho ya corona aliyoyafanya wengi tunafahamu kwa hiyo kwa hayo machache kwa sababu ya muda Naomba niishie hapa ni wachie wengine wazungumze na washukuruni sana kwa kunisikiliza. Ah. Uh, thank you so much uh, Sabat, uh, sorry Matthias Joseph Kabadi just for the sake of our visitors uh, Matthias was uh, telling us the importance of continuing to write about Magufuli. So it's not just about one person, but 
all of us, we have an opportunity to talk about him and to, not just about him, but how he strengthened us and made us believe in ourselves. So thank you so much, Matthias. Thank you for the advice that you have given us. And especially to the young people, we pick this from you. And we are learning. It's not just about Magufuli, but more leaders who are coming. We have an opportunity to write as much as we can. Thank you for setting the pace. It's not about the level of education you have, but it's about the knowledge. It's just about the message that you have that you want to bring to the people. Again, thank you. Let us give him a round of applause. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I take this time to welcome Mr. Sabato Nyamsenda from University of Dar es Salaam to come and talk about reflection and thoughts on this book launch. Karibu. Uh, thank you so much. <coughs> it's uh, with great honor that I stand here today to talk about the book on one of Africa's greatest sons, Dr. John Joseph Pombe Magufuli. They say that you cannot judge a book by its cover. But the first time I saw the poster uh, with the cover of this book in May this year, I immediately looked for the contact of the author, Professor Malango Chintenga, to commend him for this classic work. I was so overjoyed that I went an extra mile and welcomed him to Tanzania and at the University of Dar es Salaam without, of course, the permission of, of, of my boss, my head of department who is here, so as to have the book launched. I even offered to host him in my house should he be able to cover the costs for his own transport. He also wrote back immediately to thank me for my kind words about the book and promised to come to Da for the launch of this book. We continued to exchange via WhatsApp until I saw that Saud had grabbed the opportunity <laughs> to host the launching of this book. So thank you so much, uh, Saud and everyone who has joined hands to make the launching of this book uh, a possibility. This book is not a, a hagiography. It's not a book that sings praises about an extraordinary man called John Joseph Pombe Magufuli. For to do so would be to abstract him from history and present him like a saint who descended from heaven so as to save the world. Magufuli was an ordinary mortal, like many of us, even though he distinguished himself by his impeccable work ethic, his frugal lifestyle, his unquestionable integrity, his endless pursuit of knowledge, and of course, his devotion to the country. I'm not saying that we should overlook these qualities but we should place them under their historical context. That's what this book does. It locates Magufuli within the history of Africa's struggle for self-emancipation. In this sense, it places Magufuli in the same league with other great leaders of African liberation. These are great people like Toussaint Louverture, who led the struggle to end the enslavement of Africans, Mkwawa and Kinjektile, who led the first struggle to thwart colonialism, the struggle that was partially completed by the first generation of nationalists, the likes of Samora Machel, Bibititi Mohammed, and Patrice Lumumba, who led Africa to attain political independence in the 60s. When Lumumba tried to turn political independence into economic freedom, he was violently murdered. The same fate befell other radical African leaders like Sil Silvanus Olympio, Thomas Sankara, and Chris Haney. Others like Kwame Nkrumah and Modibo Keita were overthrown. Those who managed to stay in power, like Julius Nyerere, 
could not realize their visions as imperialism trashed their projects and forced them to voluntarily stay out of power. The exit of Nyerere from power marked the end of the first step of African liberation, that of political freedom. Africa descended into the worst form of neocolonialism called neoliberalism. Every trace of Africa's initiative at self-emancipation was killed and buried. Factories were closed down and turned into warehouses for storing imported manufactured goods as African workers were languishing in the streets, jobless. Social services were commodified. The leadership code that prevented leaders from using their positions for self-enrichment was trashed, turning public offices into corruption zones. Small-scale farmers and artisanal miners were forcefully evicted from their land, which was given to foreign corporations. In Bulianhuru, for instance, in this country, 52 miners, artisanal miners, were buried alive, while 500,000 others were violently evicted to give way to multinational corporations. In Ngorongoro, the Maasai headers were kicked out of their homeland to make way for trophy hunters from abroad. In many other places in the country, smallholder farmers lost their land to foreign companies. Dispossession was the order of the day. Magufuli was a minister between 1995 to 2015 when all this happened. As a minister for works, his relentless fight against embezzlement of public funds almost cost him his life when he was poisoned by the lords of corruption. When he was minister for fishery, he took the nation by surprise after he led the fight against the looting of fish in Tanzania's exclusive economic zones by foreign pirates who used gigantic modern vessels. It was therefore not surprising that he continued the same fight and expanded it to other sectors when he became president. He views the philosophical outlook and its practical application have several cornerstones. I'll discuss a few of them. The first one, and probably the most important one, was resource nationalism. Magufuli believed that Africa's poverty has nothing to do with lack of resources, but emanates from the plunder of resources by imperialist powers. When he declared his famous economic war, it was a war to, repos to repossess Africa's stolen wealth and assets and put them back into the hands of Africans. He fought to end the looting bonanza and tax holidays that had been granted to multinational corporations and forced them to change their business models. The agenda for reparations found its advocate in Tanzania as Magufuli became the first Tanzanian and probably the first African leader. In the neoliberal era, to demand reparations from mining giants for the plunder and devastations that they caused to the country. His government enacted the most radical laws, the laws on permanent sovereignty over natural resources and wealth, so as to protect our resources and to make sure that they benefit the current and future generations and force mining companies to beneficiate the minerals in the country and share the benefits with our country. He revoked title deeds of absentee land roads and gave land back to the landless producers. He banned the export of live wild animals, granted the right to the city to street vendors and the mining rights to artisanal miners. He banned Monsanto GMO trials, repossessed and revamped strategic public enterprises, and the list goes on. The state became an active player, intervening into the market to fix uh, prices of essential goods and put brakes to speculators. The second cornerstone was, of course, self-reliance, his, his rallying cry 
was uchumi wa viwanda. Africa should build a self-sustaining economy with forward and backward linkages between key sectors of the economy, particularly agriculture and industry. The third and the most important one was South-South cooperation. It was Magufuli's belief that local expertise and resources be deployed for the development of the country. Wherever we do not have expertise and resources, we should seek them from other African countries or global South nations before we turn to other nations. It was in this spirit that most of the key tasks, be it the negotiations with multinationals or the building of the new state house in Dodoma, were given to Tanzanian experts under his role. His key flagship project, the construction of the Nyerere hydropower project, was commissioned to Egyptians. Remember, the West was vehemently opposed to the construction of the Nyerere Dam to the extent that the German parliament, thinking that Tanzania was still its colony, passed a resolution to warn Tanzania against constructing it. The United States withdrew its MCC funding that was linked to Obama's Power Africa initiative and aimed at promoting American multinationals' monopoly of energy production in Africa. The US Congress passed a similar resolution. The World Bank refused to lend Tanzania uh, the money to construct the dam. This did not stop Magufuli from realizing Nyerere's dream of making Tanzania self-sufficient in power production. On the launching of the project, Magufuli addressed the nation and he said, the speech was in Kiswahili, but I'll translate it. Brothers and sisters, given that ours is a sovereign and not a poor country, I repeat, ours is a sovereign and not a poor country, as some would think. We have therefore decided that we must execute this project using our own money. As you have heard, this project will cost 6.5 trillion Tanzanian shillings. That money will be paid by the government of the United Republic of Tanzania through the taxes it collects from you, the citizens of Tanzania. And I am so glad that these monies will be paid to a contractor from Egypt, our fellow Africans. And this is an indication that if we Africans decide, we can make things happen. If we stick together, we can bring about a revolution in our continent, Africa. At this point, he put his written speech aside and delved into the history of Africa extemporaneously. I continue to quote. He said, the ancient Egyptians managed to build pyramids using calculations that cannot be comprehended using modern physics and mathematics. A stone weighing many tons was lifted up a mountain height. I do not know which technique they used. Now it doesn't make sense for us to trust, for us not to trust the same Egyptians to build our hydropower project while they built pyramids which are the wonders of the world today. We want this project to be another wonder that Africans and Tanzanians can make great things happen using their own resources. I believe Sheikh Anta Diop, who wrote Africa's, African Origins of Civilization, was turning in his grave with joy that the knowledge about Africa's ancient civilization was applied to reclaim Africa's self-esteem and ability to bring its own development. Yes, reclaiming the dignity and self-esteem of Africans was another cornerstone of Magufuli's thought. That we too, as Africans, 
are human beings with mental faculties and that we too as Africans can think for ourselves and make decisions about our future. Those who enslaved us continue to tell us that the task of thinking and deciding about Africa's destiny should be left to our former colonizers, both directly and indirectly through the IMF and World Bank. No wonder that when Magufuli launched his economic war, the IMF released a fake report that showed that Tanzania's economy was shrinking, that there had been zero economic growth since Magufuli came to power, while the World Bank placed Tanzania lower in the ease of doing business index. The World Bank may, be, may have been right. The ease of doing business is a code word for the ease of looting resources, and yes, Magufuli put brakes on looters. But the IMF was wrong. As Magufuli stood, stood firm in his pursuits, these same fabricators of statistics finally gave in. In 2020, they published another report that showed that uh, Tanzania's GDP, far from contracting, had actually doubled under Magufuli's first phase, lifting Tanzania from a lower, mid, from a lower income country into a middle income country in a span of five years. Clap your hands for this great man. In other words, there had been an economic miracle under Magufuli. President, President Lazarus Chakwera of Malawi summed up Magufuli's extraordinary achievements and defiance to imperialist dictates and stereotypes with a poetic phrase, they did not see Magufuli coming. I quote, when they say laziness and sloth in public service cannot be cured, they did not see Magufuli coming. You can repeat after me that, that chorus. They did not see Magufuli coming, right? Yeah. So I repeat. When they say laziness and sloth in public service cannot be cured, they did not see Magufuli coming. When they say the cartels of corruption strangling African governments cannot be defeated. They did not see Magufuli coming. When they said African states cannot become middle income countries within a single presidential term, they did not see Magufuli coming. When they said infrastructural projects in Africa cannot be completed in time and on budget, they did not see Magufuli coming. When they said the only way to pursue our development is to follow the failed prescriptions of foreign financial institutions that have left Africa more impoverished and in debt than they found it. They did not see Magufuli coming. That's the end. Thank you. To us, Razalus Chakwela continued who have the honor of going through this world as Africans. I, just give me one minute, I'm, I'll be done. As Africans and Magufuli, and Magufuli's country, Magufuli's country of the country shall forever be a light on that pilgrimage. John Pombe Magufuli was not just an, an icon, he was a hero. May his name be preserved in every cabin of Africa as a symbol of the kind of resolve that will create the kind of Africa we want. May his work be venerated in every village as an example worthy of our imitation. From Malawi, we got the best eulogy of Magufuli at the time when Western, the Western looters and their local agents were busy tarnishing his image. From Malawi, we now have the best book on Magufuli's philosophical outlook and its place in the second liberation of Africa. Indeed, when the IMF had made a ridiculous proposal way back in 1986 that Africa did not need universities, they wanted to, present to, to prevent our continent from producing intellectuals 
of Professor Chintenga's caliber. This book has fulfilled Lumumba's prophecy. And I quote, Lumumba said, history will one day have its say. It will not be the history taught in the United Nations, Washington, Paris, or Brussels. However, but the history taught in the countries that have rid themselves of colonialism and its pathways. Africa will write its own history in both north and south of the Sahara. It will be a history full of glory and dignity. Once again, congratulations, Professor uh, Chintenga. And thank you so much for this magnificent work. May this book be translated in all African languages and be read by all Africans and friends of Africa wherever they are in the world. May it be a compass that guides the sons and daughters of Africa in our struggle to abolish Africa's modern economic slavery. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sabato Nyamsenda. He is at University of Dar es Salaam. I've been, I was looking at your profile and I realized you are a lecturer at University of Dar es Salaam. Yeah, and uh, we are happy and thank you for joining the family of South. As much as I also did my PhD at University of Dar es Salaam, I think we are in one group where we, it's a group of a lot of international students and majority of us are from different African countries. So basically in this room, it's not just about Tanzania, but we are a small African in this room, yeah, sharing the history of Magufuli. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. In summary, because uh, there are people also following us online, uh, we are live on Star TV. We are live through our own St. Augustine University uh, digital media. And uh, just a summary for our friends who are following up online, basically, yeah, Sabato summarized uh, Ametupa Kiufupi kuhusu jinsi gani the former president ali alipambana na ku, e, uchumi ameongelea matukio kadhaa wa kadhaa kuhusu uchumi na jinsi gani alisimama na nchi kwa kutotegemea hela kutoka nje na aliwaaminishaje wa Tanzania kwamba wa Tanzania wanaweza so uh, tunachokiona hapa katika speech yake sio kwamba ni kupambana lakini alitaka tu wa Tanzania wamuelewe kwamba kila mtanzania kwa hali yake na kwa namna yake ana uwezo na hata kama hayupo lakini tunaona kwamba tunaishi ile spirit kwamba tunaweza hata kama wewe ni mkulima ni mfagiaji in your own capacity kuna kitu unachokiweza na hicho ndio kitu alitaka wa Afrika waamini uh, asante thank you thank you um, sabato uh, next we have the student leader, who is Joshua Matewele, wherever you are. Joshua Matewele is the student leader from, uh, is the acting student union president of the University of Hebron in Malawi. He will be giving a speech at the same time a poem. Uh, welcome. All right, good afternoon. Thank you so much, it's an honor to be here. 
and uh, really don't take it for granted. Uh, my name is Joshua Benjamin Matewere, and I am the Student Union uh, President, acting, yes, of the Hebron University of Malawi. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, our guest of honor, Archbishop of Dar es Salaam, His Grace, Judy Tadius, the Tanzanian Republic, uh, Madam Janet Magufuli and the family, Chama Chama Pinduzi, members of the diplomatic corps, government representatives, dear parents, staff, and my fellow students. Allow me to also honor my mentor, Professor P.L. Lumumba. You are a great inspiration to the youth of our African continent. And wherever you're watching this, know that you are contributing to raising a young, different generation of Africans that love their continent and nations and who bring great transformation and revolution in all spheres. In a very, very, very special way, allow me also to honor our president, His Excellency, Dr. Lazarus McCarthy Jaquera, president of the Republic of Malawi, and also in a very, very, very special way, allow me to honor Her Excellency, Mama Samia Suluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of, of Tanzania. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. It's a real honor and a great privilege to stand and address all of you today. From Lilongwe, Malawi, to Mwanza District, to Chato, I visited where the great lion, the hero of our people, was laid to rest. John Pombe Magofuli. I saw with my own eyes and stood and paid my respect to a great African leader in the 21st century who has started a great revolution even in the hearts of all Africans, both young and old. And even to the youths like myself. We're gathered today to celebrate that legacy, and may the soul of President John Pombe Magufuli rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the name Magufuli is a household name in Africa and beyond. Both young and old, small and great, have been impacted by the life of the former president of Tanzania. And they all re-echo this name all over Africa, including Malawi, where I come from. Professor P.L. Lumumba said, third world is a state of the mind. And until we change our attitude as Africans, if there is a fourth, fifth, and even sixth world, we will be in it. No one should ever lie to us as Africans. We have seen the benchmark, landmark, and standard of true leadership in modern Africa. Magufuli is truly more than just a legacy, more than a legend, and more than the Hall of Fame. He is revolution and transformation. He was a mighty selfless soldier and warrior whose heart beat for his people and his nation, his continent, and not person again. We have heard and read of the great stories of a leader challenging the status quo, the norms and even standards set by both the colonizers and even his own people. The ending of massive corruption and looting, the correct resource mobilization and utilization by the government of President Magufuli was far transcending Africa. We heard and read of the radical road infrastructures and development projects that were fine-tuned to proper standards that will make them last a hundred years and more, like the Magufuli Bridge that I visited on my way to Chato. 
We have heard of the promotion of truth, integrity, and honesty in all sectors and systems of governance. This is a fine example that all leaders, even of African continent, must emulate. As a youth, and as uh, the president, standing in, I charge all youths of Africa in different nations to rise with patriotism and love our continent and nations and be ready to fight the good fight like President Magufuli did with the nation of Tanzania. To my fellow youths of Tanzania and Malawi, let us join hands and work together to build good bilateral relations, even amongst ourselves, and share ideas to foster trade and development, and together break the neocolonization of Africa. And in our lifetime, let us not allow corruption, tribalism, nepotism, greed, and fear to defeat us on this noble fight. To the Chama, Chama Pinduzi, and the Tanzanian government, and to Her Excellency the President, Mama Samia Suluhu Hassan, may you be strengthened by the Almighty God to carry on the great legacy of President John Pombe Magufuli. And may you continue taking Tanzania to greater heights. As Malawians, we are right behind you to support you, to stand with you, and to pray for you. And finally, the question is, who will be the next John Pombe Magufuli in Africa? Or who will be the John Pombe Magufulis of Africa? Long live the legacy of President Comrade John Pombe Magufuli. I thank you all. Uh, I have a heart, something upon my heart that I need to share very quickly. This is my poem uh, that I'm going to share with you. I shared it uh, in Saudi, and uh, yeah, we had a very good response. Thank you so much. This is entitled, Africa Magufuli and Change. I am the great orator. I see near and far beyond the horizon, ancient and latter. I see a continent so rich, so bright, and its people so vibrant, unique, beautiful, ebony, full of Ubuntu. But I saw an eclipse, an intruder, so pale but seemed so friendly and caring. Yes, I looked closer, and I saw him carrying a Bible and a gun. Oh, that's now domination, colonization. Long after a people enslaved and oppressed, chained in colonization, I saw the founding fathers fighting to break free from the chains of oppression. Julius Kambarage Nyerere, Kenneth Kaunda, Kamuzu Banda, Robert Mugabe, taking back Africa's foundation. Yes, there was an immigration from the former, but still more, we became enslaved in the latter, Neocolonization and Mother Africa cried. From the far east, I saw a light, hope, a new dawn, a new sun birthed a true son of Africa, the son of the Almighty, the great I am. Magufuli, a mighty and tall spreading tree that gave shade to both man and beast equally. Magufuli, a mighty star up in the sky whose illumination expelled darkness from a nation and continent Africa. Magufuli, a mighty mountain peak so high that was the benchmark and landmark from, for the nations. Oh, how so breathtaking. Magufuli, a mighty eagle high up in the sky that roamed the territory and stood guard like a watchman on the wall. Magufuli, a mighty selfless soldier 
and warrior whose heart beat for his people, his nation, his continent, and not person again. Magufuli, the great lion that roared and protected the territory from danger, exploiters, and plunderers of our God-given resources. But where now is that son of Africa? I see his brothers and sisters crying while hiding, afraid to step up and rise to the scene like Magufuli and Tanzania. I hear Mother Africa crying and refuses to be comforted. And she says, where is my son? Oh, my son. Gone too soon. Where is my son? But I looked closer and I saw a vision in Chato. I saw the rising of a new dawn and many sons and daughters of Africa are rising. Yes, I looked up by the Magufuli Bridge and I saw a new generation, fearless and courageous, leading a mighty revolution to the final liberation of our motherland, Africa, and bridging the economic and wealth gap in Africa. Yes, I see young and old, both great and small, awakened to the tricks, propaganda, and sinister agendas for long employed against our motherland, Africa. Just like Martin Luther King Jr., a liberator, John Pombe Magufuli stands shoulder to shoulder as a five-star general of our time, a hero of our people with his dream transcending Africa. Asante sana, Baba Wetu, John Pombe Magufuli. And as I visited Chato, yes, I heard him speak to me, and he said, I have a dream from Cape to Cairo that one day I'll see the total magufulification of Africa and change. Yes, I have a dream that the sons and daughters of Africa would rise and break free from the shackles of neocolonization. Indeed, I have a dream that my generation, the youth, will rise up with boldness and determination and courageously stand shoulder to shoulder with the sons of the other continents. I have a dream that my generation would rise and catch the mantles and spirits of great liberators of Africa long gone. Oh yes, I have a dream that the remaining generation will soldier forward in technology, modernization, and development of the modern Africa. And finally, I have a dream that the sons of Africa will all stand united with one love and one heart and work together to defeat the divide and rule strategies employed against our motherland Africa. Yes, I have a dream, Africa, Magufuli, and change. Asante sana. Zigo Mogwambili, thank you all. God bless you all. Mungu abariki Africa. Mungu abariki Tanzania. I thank you all. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Joshua Matewele. Thank you for encouraging the young people. And thank you for leaving a question to us, who will be the next. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving into the next session. I would like to welcome the high table. That is um, uh, our representative of the guest of honor, uh, Professor Malango and Professor Mapunda, to just stand where you are, and we're going to launch the book. So Professor, Professor Mapunda will cut the book, and it will be a sign of us officiating the, the option, I mean launching the book, the three of you, and then. We'd like to welcome the guest of honor to do the cutting, sorry. Hi. Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, here is the unveiling of Africa. <laughs> Africa, Magufuli and Change, an integrated approach in abolishing Africans' modern economic slavery. Thank you, thank you so much. I would like to welcome Professor Mapunda to welcome our guest of honor for the speech. Yeah, okay, the moment that we have been waiting for has uh, arrived and now we have uh, the more serious uh, speeches at words and uh, uh, my task is to invite the guest of honor, uh, and uh, this is none other than the uh, auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Dar es Salaam, Bishop uh, Stephen Musomba, who is representing uh, the guest of honor. Uh, you are accent caribou. Asante sana. Waheshimiwa sana maprofesa walio muhumu na Dr. Na sisi sote mabibi na mabwana habari za jioni. Kwa niaba ya mwashamba askofu mkuu Juta Deus Waichi askofu mkuu wa Jimbo kula Dar es Salaam ambaye ndiye alialikwa aweze kuwa mgeni rasmi katika shughuli hii kwa, shu, eh, kwa kazi zingine basi alishindwa kufika hapa na mimi namwakilisha kwa niaba yake niweze kuchukua nafasi hii kuweza kumpongeza sana profesa Malango Chintenga director of academic affairs research and publications University of Hebron Malawi ambaye ndio mtunzi wa kitabu. Hongera sana kwa kazi nzuri. Congratulations. Sisi sote tulio huzulia hapa e, jambo muhimu tu kwamba e, tutambue atupo katika jukwaa la kisiasa. Ili mtasikia akawa na wivu wa kwake. Tuko kwenye academic formation. Kwa tunajifunza na tuna reform our minds. Na kwa sababu hiyo tutambue hilo ili sisi tukachanganyikiwa tukafikiri tuko kwenye siasa. Pana. Ingawa siasa kwa maana halisi imegeuzwa imechakachuliwa na kuwa kitu kingine ndio maana tunaogopa kuchanganya. Maana ukisema kama siasa inachanganywa na uongo. Lakini hapa tunapoongelea academic issues tuna base kwenye truth kwenye reality. It's not a fiction. It's a reality. Kwa hiyo tuko pale. Kwa hiyo tunapomtaja Magufuli yote ah alikuwa rais hichi ah alikuwa nani? We are talking about what happened. What he did and what was the impact of what he did ndio tunachoangalia hicho na ndicho alichokifanya profesa profesa ameandika vizuri sana kitabu hiki hasa anavyokwenda nacho akitrace history ya waafrika na akiangalia walivyo jiruhiwa Manake kuna slave trade. Afrika wa koloni, eh, colonialism. Lakini ni majina yale yale. Slave trade, colonialism. Lakini leo tunaongelea tena neo colonialism. 
ambayo inatutesa leo na ndio maana katika kitabu hiki anaongelea vizuri sana kwamba what is a true freedom si tu kwamba mimi naweza nikawa rais lakini unaweza kawa rais ukawa kibaraka ukawa rais wa kusikiliza leo nikaseme nini alafu uju seme tena kesho urudi tena wakwambie nini then by so doing then you are not free tunapoongelea freedom tunaongelea kwanza integral uh, human yote yani mtu mzima na tunaongelea vile vile kwenye economics uchumi freedom katika uchumi ni muhimu sana na huu ndio unao eh, tudidimiza sisi wa Afrika tunasema tuko maskini kwa sababu pengine tujitambua na ndio maana watu wengine ukiongea nao inakuwa kama utani lakini wanaoyaongea mpaka we mwenyewe unakasema uja anafikiria akili zake ziko sawa au ameshanganyikiwa kwa mfano kuna mmoja enzi hizo tulikuwa tunaongea tu anakuambia heri nizaliwe Ulaya mbwa kuliko nizaliwe Afrika binadamu sasa maneno kama hayo na wakati mwingine mtu anayosema kwamba ameenda Ulaya anafikiri kwamba hera zinaokotwa kwa hiyo kuna mmoja aliona mwenzake ameenda Ulaya akampigia simu akamwambia naomba walau unitumie matrekta tatu tu walau eh walau matrekta tatu hiyo ni walau maana angeongeza zaidi lakini mtu huyo hajui na na ndio maana kwa kazi hii aliyoifanya profesa itatusaidia kufanya kitu tunachosema to reform our mind to make what we call metanoia wa greek wanapoongelea metanoia ulikuwa unaenda huku badili mwelekeo unaenda huku tusije tukaingia kwenye e, wanasema nini petty minds ambazo zinatudanganya na matokeo yake tunakuwa wabinafsi na hatuelewi tena kitu cha kufanya zaidi ya kujifungia zaidi ukikosolewa unakasirika na tunataka kusifiwa tu hatutaki kuongozana yani kwamba hapa bwana wewe umekosea kwa hiyo ufanye moja mbili tatu na kasirika na hiyo sio na ndio maana e, wakati nakisoma kitabu hiki nasema sikiwe formation compendium kitusaidie e, mtu anaposoma maana leo hii tumekifungua eh tunapokifungua ni kwa ajili ya kusoma Nafungua kitabu hiki leo ni kwa ajili ya kusoma. Tutanunua kwa ajili ya kusoma sio kwa ajili ya kuweka kwenye makabati. Na vile vile si kusoma tu. Ni na kuweza kufanya evaluation kinanisaidia nini kitabu hiki. Na kimenipa mabadiliko gani katika maisha yangu kitabu hiki. Lakini nikisema tu ah nimesoma amefanya kazi nzuri nimesoma. Naweka kule haitasaidia chochote. Tutakuwa na mavitabu 200 500 hayata tusaidia. Na kwa hiyo ni kusoma na vile vile ku apply yale ambayo yameandikwa humu yatusaidie sisi kuishi vizuri. Tukiangalia e, bara letu la Afrika leo hii wala uta, ukienda tu popote pale ndio maana naongelea kwamba kwenye economic freedom inaleta impact nyingi sana na tena mbaya kwa sababu tunakuwa ni tegemezi. Na kwa sababu tunaambiwa chochote tunasema ndio baba. Saa hizi saa hizi wewe uwe shoga ndio baba. Saa hizi fundisha watoto wako wawe mashoga ndio baba. Saa hizi wewe e, meza mavidonge ya uzazi wa mpango ndio baba. Lakini yana effect gani katika maisha yako? Na ndio maana tunasema kwamba e, leo hii tunaoiona moro degradations kwa sababu ya hiyo eh, atuna economic freedom economic freedom hiyo tunaona no, hapa watu wanavaa eh, vimini wanavaa nini nguo za ajabu 
Kisema kwamba tuko eh, tuko free. Lakini free tunasahau mila yetu sisi ni Waafrika. Heshima kwa watu wazima hakuna tena. Lakini sasa kama hakuna heshima kuna vyote hivi e, yote haya yanatokeana na hiyo. Ndio maana mwingine akisimamia msimamo wake wanasema hatutakupa pesa. Unaona? Na tutakupa pesa. Wanaona kwamba hiyo ndio silaha. Na tutakupa pesa. Kuna jamaa mmoja anasema kwamba alikuwa nilikuwa namsikiliza anasema kwamba e, unaposafiri unaenda Ulaya ni sawa sawa unachukua kikombe unaanza e, kukamua e, e, unakamua e, linyama ili kubwa ya elephant eh unalikamua hiyo unaona una, unaweza kukamua kweli wewe alafu wanapokuja huku yani wanaandikiwa hapo hapo kama ni vizu napewa hapo hapo na sisi wakati mwingine hata sisi wa Afrika kwa Afrika sema ni ngoja niende niende labda inchi fulani hey. na sisi tunaanza ku kuchukua msimamo ule ule wa Ulaya wapi tunaweka pale na matokeo yake tuangalie hata vile vile sisi katika mfumo wetu wa maisha hatupo kama kule mfumo wetu wa maisha tuna, ni, ni, ni mfumo shirikishi ambapo tunaongea na tunapoongea katika kuongea huko na kushirikishana ni uponyaji is a healing lakini kuli kujifungia kuna tengeneza e, tunachosema kwamba ni psychological problems tunapata ma psychologists wengi ambao wana be employed kwa ajili ya kututibu na tunakoelekea ndio huko ndio huko kwa sababu ya e, tunasema tuko katika modern world tunasahau tulivyo sisi na kwa sababu hiyo kitabu hiki kitusaidie sisi kwa ajili ya ku reform our minds e, ni kwa ajili ya self awareness na ili tuweze kufanya hivi tunahitaji sana kwa wanyenyekevu mnyenyekevu sio yule anayepiga magoti mbele ya mwenzake mnyenyekevu ndio yule anaye sema mimi di, ni binadamu nipo tayari kusikiliza wenzangu ananiambia nini na nipo tayari kufuata ushauri wao wa, unisaidie mimi kukua kiakili kibinadamu na vile vile hata kiroho ili niweze kuwa mwema kuliko tuwe na magonjwa ya akili ambayo yamekuja mengi sana tunasema afya ya akili ni hiyo ndio maana kwa mfano unasema kwamba wewe unatembea tembea huko ovyo ovyo tu alafu watu wanakucheka ndio unafurahi wakikucheka unahitaji kwenda hospitali unaumwa una, 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 una ugonjwa wa akili unahitaji tiba kwa hiyo e, ndio maana anasema kwamba turudi tena kwenye roots zetu tuangalie tulikotoka tuangalie tulipo ushirikiano wetu kwa pamoja tunaweza na ushirikiano utatufanya tuweze kufanya vizuri na elimu tunayoipata tunajua kwamba nayo imeathiriwa ndio maana leo hii tuna, tunaogopa kwenda kukaa kwenye kwenye kiti kusoma hivi tunataka tufanyiwe wewe pata picha wewe ni daktari Unaso, unasomea unafanywa kila kitu utafanywa operation kwa mtu sunaua badala ya kuoperate kichwa na operate miguu yote haya ni, ni, ni effect ya kusema kwamba sasa sasa elimu yetu tunataka tuitwe doctor lakini hatujafanyia kazi tunataka tuitwe professor tujafanyia kazi eh? usiwe tu wamemtunukia ndio tunachotaka hicho Hakita tusaidia katika maisha yetu. Kwa hiyo ndio maana tunapoona kitu kama hiki kile mfano sasa kitusaidie sisi kwenda ndani zaidi kuangalia elimu yetu, malezi yetu ili kwa Waafrika sisi ni wafanyakazi, ni wachapa kazi eh. Lakini leo yetu tunapenda kulelewa. Matokeo yake ya kulelewa hayo Tunataka yani watu pesa. Yule anayetupa pesa naona kwamba ndio rafiki. Kumbe tunakuwa watumwa bado. Na ndio maana hata ndoa zetu zidumu. Vijana wengi wanataka kulelewa, naolewa na mwanamke ambaye ana pesa. Mwana mwanamke anatafuta pesa. Tunaogopa kazi saa hizi. Tumepata wapi hayo yote? Mbona si ya kwetu? Ese mambo yetu hayo. Hizo tunayapata wapi haya? Kwa hiyo tunahitaji sasa kukaa chini, kukaa chini kuangalia yote hayo. Kwa hiyo malezi yetu. 
tuangalie mila yetu ambayo ni muhimu sana leo hii tunaongelea e, mambo ya mmonyoko wa maadili waafrika kwa asili ni wapenda uhai lakini sasa propaganda za nje zimetujia hapa eh kwa sababu tuna pesa eh tunapewa ta pesa kutoa mimba unaotoaji wa mimba mwingi sasa ameokotwa mtoto pale ameokotwa si yonela atataki tena watoto leo atataka atakuzaa sisi siku hizi kwa nini sasa ni kwa sababu ya hiyo hiyo trend yani wakiniona mimi hata hata, hata wakati fulani nataka kubadilia hata ngozi ni kwa mweusi tii nataka niwe mweupe na wakati fulani ukimeza hivyo vidonge alafu kasimama unakuwa kama sanamu so hiyo ni kama kuweke kwenye mizumu mule yani wewe umemeza kile kidonge chako kimekuchubua kiasi kwamba ukiangalia mishipa ya, da, ya damu ile inaonekana imesimama hii tunajidhalilisha sana kwa sababu ya mambo ambayo ya kuiga nje kwa hiyo tunapoongelea mambo ya African independence katika mambo ya uchumi e, kama tulivyo tunavyosoma katika kitabu hiki tuongelee sasa haya yote yanaingira hapo mila yanaongelea mambo ya elimu yanaongelea mambo ya malezi yetu yanaongelea lifestyle yetu tuweze kurudi nyuma kuangalia kwamba tunakoelekea sio tu, turudi tuweze kufanya inavyotakiwa kwa hiyo kwa niamba ya ya, 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 ya ya mgeni rasmi mwasho baba askofu mkuu niko na maana machache tu hayo na zaidi zaidi kumpongeza sana profesa malango e, ningekuwa nafahamu kiruga chenu kule ningesema <laughs> eh kuna 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 hicho kichewa bwana wanaongea kichewa hicho eh hiyo uh, kwa mbili kwa, kwa mbili eh eh asante sana mungu akubariki akuongoze katika kazi yako na uendelee kuandika tena hatua nyingine Mtu wa nje ameweza kuona hiyo nani hazina sisi hiyo wa ndani pengine tuone hazina kwa sababu ya dharau yetu wakati fulani ya kudharauliana atu, atu, atuoni ta, za hazina hiyo hazina iliyofichika mtu wa nje ameiweza kuipata na ameifukua eh basi tuweze kuchukua eh, njia hiyo na kuweza kuelewa na kuweza kufanya inavyotakiwa asante sana kwa kunisikiliza Another round of, of applause for our guest of honor. Thank you so much your lordship Stephen Msomba for the for the message. Truly uh, he gave us uh, he was just giving us the backbone of this uh, when we talk about economic slavery, yeah? It's not I mean what we are seeing today it's it's just the backbone of it or rather the where it all comes from is from the economic slavery part. Yeah, it has uh, driven us to be really um, slaves in a way. And slavery is not just about how we learned in the history, but now even the life that we live today. So for us to be independent and for us to uh, focus on ourselves is to believe in ourselves. And what, that's what the former president said. We can. So everyone in our own capacity, we can. We, we don't have to be very dependent yeah so as we read and just to echo what uh, the guest of honor said it's not about launching the book but how will the book will help each and every one of us in our own capacity to pick up something and be able to use it in our own lifestyle and be able to bring change that our fallen hero wanted us to have uh, ladies and gentlemen I would like again to welcome Professor Mapunda who will in turn welcome our author to give a speech. Thank you once again, MC. Uh, the guest of honor, now I have the pleasure to 
welcome Professor Malango to the podium. But before I do that, uh, as a scholar, I have uh, a few words of admiration that I need to utter. Uh, Professor Malango, yeah, it is uh, not only the content of your book that uh, makes some of us who are in the uh, profession of academia uh, admire you, but the effort that you put into it. We are aware of the kind of uh, labor that goes into writing. There are people who completed PhD maybe in 1960, and they have remained so uh, to the present, not publishing a single article to enable them to move even from lectureship to uh, senior lectureship, leave alone professorship. So uh, I wanted to uh, submit my appreciation of your scholarliness in this aspect as being able to write a book which one of the readers has correctly said is actually fact-based and research-based and not just statements as uh, some people would like to put sometimes. Uh, this is research-based and you say yourself in the book that uh, you have spent five, six years collecting information and so that is not easy and people in academia fail to do this. And as I said at the beginning, the, the reason why South, as a university, decided to make this an important event, you had a launch in Mwanza and a second one here in Dar es Salaam. One of the encouragement that we have, not only of the content about slavery, economic slavery, that the youth should take it uh, and leave it, but also for the young academics to know that to become a professor, as the guest of honor was saying, is not just a matter of claiming that I want to be a professor. No, we want you to prove that you are. And indeed, you have proven to us that indeed, uh, University of Hebron didn't make a mistake to make you a professor. And now I have the honor to invite you to come and tell us. Thank you. Habari uh, ya Johnny. It's like that. <laughs> Habari ya Johnny. Asante sana. I may not challenge you to continue. I'm still a toddler in learning Kiswahili. But I do believe that in three months' time, I'll be as much competent as you. I think I'll be as much eloquent yeah, as you. Yeah, that's the present mission. Our guest of honor, Your Lordship Stephen Musomba, 
the auxiliary bishop our principal professor mapunda our uh, vc for south professor costa rica mahalo Mr. Sabato Nyamsenda from the University of Dar es Salaam, representing the School of Political Science and Public Administration. Mr. Matthews Kabadi, our renowned writer, who was with us in Mwanza and so glad to also see him here. Professor Matambaria, the friend of Saudi. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Our invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for the warmest welcome that I've ever had. This is quite remarkable. It, of course, going to my diary as one of the greatest events that I've ever recorded. The guest of honor Allow me in a special way to thank Professor Costa Rica Mahalo and his South team for a commendable job that has been done to make this event possible. As Brother Nyamsenda said, he prayed the best tricks to make sure that he hijacks his, this uh, event. He competent, I mean, competently did it, and we appreciate uh, Professor Maharu's law and the team for being such versatile. And at the same time, we'd like to thank the University of Dar es Salaam for the support that you have shown throughout this project, especially towards this launch. Mr. Myasenda was correct and completely right when he was mentioning it that we've been in touch again and again. We've been in touch through whichever means, phone calls, text, name them and call them. All in all, the support has been massive. If I'm to mention one by one, time may not allow us. But I should accept the fact and acknowledge it that the Tanzanians have actually shown that you are brothers, you are our real brothers. Coming to this side is because your brotherly act that you have shown. In absentia, allow me to thank Madam Agufuri for the massive support that she has also put, especially the moral support. Yesterday, I, had, I, I received a call for a visitation whereby I had to go to her residence. It was extremely awesome. Of course, maybe I don't have to preempt. I'm going to uh, push it at some point as I'm moving on. But at this point in time, I just want to acknowledge her support in the process. The guest of honor, it is always hard, especially to come 
and talk when the best speakers have done their role. And more specifically, when you are even shorter, you have to make sure that you make your voice taller at some point. I would like to thank you, my colleagues, for splendid presentations, eloquent presentations. When I was coming, I was trying to, I was debating in between making a presentation and then just a mere speech or else just a mere talk until when I was leaving my seat, coming to this place, I said, okay, let me just get on the podium, we'll see what it's going to be like. It's always an expectation from the audience. They'd like to hear what the author is going to say. And the author is always at the happiest moment to have the occasion, the event done. So to have the audience expectations and then the author, author's you know, expectations meeting is one of the greatest challenge. But one thing that I'd like to assure you is that I am the happiest. In most cases, we tend maybe to stammer just because we have that exceeding joy which we can't, you know, maybe express it through the word of mouth. However, the greatest challenge for the audience is that they would like to hear more about the author. What is it? Well, what, you know, inspired? What made, you know, what made the author to come up with a publication? So, the case of honor, uh, my speech will be different. I will be divided into two parts. The first one, I'm going to talk about the, the technical aspect of the book, the uh, publication itself. The book project was started in 2017. So in 2017, that's when I started the book project, and it got completed in 2023. Uh, so basically, it has taken me about six years to complete the book. We corrected data using various means. For example, we used uh, desk research to correct the data. We used observation, and we also used interviews to correct data. So somewhere around 2019, 2020, I had to visit Tanzania several times just to make sure that I correct the data. I remember visiting Zanzibar for some weeks just to make sure that I have actionable data and visiting Dar es Salaam for some weeks as well just to make sure that the data is accurate. I also had to visit various countries uh, to, apart from Tanzania to correct data. Yeah, for example, I had to visit Zambia, Zimbabwe, Kenya, RSA, I had to visit India, I had to visit Qatar, I had to visit United Arab Emirates, just to make sure that the strategies we are presenting are well round and also well benchmarked with the other economies as well. The guest of honor, in terms of referencing, the book has used the Harvard referencing system and it has 252 in-text referenced uh, citations. And the book has acknowledged 50 websites. The preliminary part, the reference section and the main chapters are adding up to 500 pages. Initially, we produced the book in a way that it gave us 800 pages. Then when we came up with the 800 page layout, somebody intimidated us. Hey, prof, you are coming up with a publication that has 800 pages. Who do you think is going to read your 800 in document? You're going to read your by yourself. Yeah, then I said, okay, fine. Then we're going to play some uh, mathematics. So what it did was to increase the size of the book so that the pages are fewer, right? Yeah, for, the, for those that are in, let's say, in the medical area, or those that are clinicians, clinicians they understand what they call the placebo effect. Yeah, the placebo effect is a kind of a thing whereby you say, no, doctor, I don't get along with tablets, I prefer injections. 
So they're going to change it in one way or another by the same medication, right? And then when it, they inject you, they say, now you must feel better, isn't it? Yes, I'm feeling better. But the same, you know, generic uh, drug, right? Yeah, there are placebo effects. So this time around, we have 500 pages so that at least it's, it's not intimidating. Uh, just the way you can um, look, look, look at it is somehow portable, but that time it was uh, something else. So this time around, uh, you can easily digest it uh, at some point just because we increased the book size. The book has five parts, five components. And as a matter of fact, it has 48 chapters. Out of the 48 chapters, 13 chapters have put Magufuli in context. 13 chapters have put Magufuli in context. So uh, the first part of the book is called The Footprints of Slavery, which as correctly as um, uh, the Lordship has put it, we need to learn from the past because the past, that's where we learn from and the present is here for us to manage and the future is there for us to create it. So the past is very critical. So we are taking Africa from the time of slavery. So we are actually seeing the footprints of slavery. On that part, the author had to visit several sites. Yeah, for example, Emina Castle in Ghana, just to appreciate what the atrocities of slavery were like. And in 2019, the author had to come to Zanzibar and he actually got into the underground chambers for some time just to test how the slaves were feeling. It was a very awkward situation, a very awkward experience. It is very hard for you to go to Zanzibar, especially in the underground slave chamber, and then you come out without you know, shedding tears. Uh, it's very hard. And it's very difficult for you to come out of the chamber, and then you move on, you quickly go for Ugali. It's very you know, difficult. Why? Because of the situation in the uh, slave chambers. Yeah, so let's say on this part, the author has come up with some chapters. Chapters like, yeah, uh, chapters like uh, chapter one, show me the Elmina Castle, not the Windsor Castle. Show me the Elmina Castle, not the Windsor Castle. I think it's very soon that we actually saw our heads of state flying to, uh, let's say, Europe to bury the queen, isn't it? Right? Yeah, fine. So anyway, in Europe, that's where we have you know, the Windsor Castle in England, all right? But the author is saying, I don't want to go to Windsor Castle. Show me the Elmina Castle, because that's where I'm going to see the atrocities that's, that our fathers and, you know, like mothers were facing, our sons and brothers, you know, were facing. And from there, that's where we start, you know, questioning the answers that the Western has, you know, given us. The chapters could continue from uh, chapter one went to chapter two, uh, which is uh, teardrops in Zanzibar, because in Zanzibar I had to go to the underground chamber, you know, cry because of the atrocities that I was, you know, I could experience. In chapter four, it's talking about freed but caged, freed but caged. Neocolonialism. After slavery, they let us, you know, free at some point, but they tied us to a chain so that we are still, you know, caged. So we are still caged even until now. And chapter five, Lincoln yet to rest in peace. Abraham Lincoln is not sleeping in peace just because his wish is still not made at some point. So we have part two, which is talking about Africa a panoramic view of the key challenges. Africa, a panoramic view of the key challenges. So let's talk about rest in peace, Yaguine Koita. It's a sad story if you actually uh, go through it. Um, and we have chapter, let's say, seven, development crisis in Africa. Chapter eight, rich Africa and poor Africans. And then chapter nine, tribalism and nepotism, the killer dragons of development in Africa. Among the countries that I've actually traveled, I've seen that tribalism 
is something that is stagnating the development of Africa. You go to Zambia, the case is the same. You go to Nigeria, the song is the same. You go to Malawi, the song is the same. You come this side, you also find tribalism in, you know, some dimensions. So, tribalism, a killer, you know, dragon. And then chapter 10, the donor dependency, a killer insulin for Africa's diabetic economic condition. In chapter 11, Socrates, others call, uh, pronounce it as Socrates. Yeah, Socrates, proven right in Africa. This is the time, or this is a chapter whereby the author has put a lot of arguments as of, you know, the effectiveness of our democracy in Africa. The author has actually argued the quality of the vote, right? Whilst, you know, we look at the content of the vote, but the quality of the vote matters more. So the author has actually, you know, argued that, come on, we need to take a look at this. It's not just about, you know, how many have voted, but we also look at what's the quality of the vote. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any sense to count a vote from somebody else who doesn't even know how to write, who doesn't even know what the manifesto is about. It maybe doesn't make any sense at some point. So we need to take a look at that. Yeah, and then we have part three, which is talking about, which is putting Magufuli in context. Magufuli, a practical model for economic and leadership excellency. So uh, this part has brought some very good chapters in context. For example, uh, chapter 12, a shining star in the darkness of neocolonialism. Chapter 13, Heineken in Parliament. Heineken in Parliament. Uh, chapter 14, I'm um, chapter 14, uh, chapter 13, Heineken in Parliament. Chapter 14, a tete a tete with Kenyatta. Chapter 15, missing in Manhattan. Chapter 16, Magufuli's business prowess. Uh, 17, thriving bureaucracy. Uh, then 18, Magufuli's um, tears on corruption. And 19, the economic development uh, superstar. Chapter 20, the common good gravitas. Chapter 21, the immortal Magufuli. And then part four, the book has articulated the change that Africa needs. So on this part, uh, the author is also trying to be practical, bringing a fun topic like uh, chapter 22, take me to the Mosi Watunya, not the Buju Khalifa. Take me to the Mosi Watunya, not the Buju Khalifa. Whilst correcting data, I had to go to the Buju Khalifa, uh, which is the United Arab Emirates. So the author was very delighted, was very uh, interested, felt just so good to actually see the tallest building in the world. So he was very happy to say, wow, I've seen the tallest building in the world. I'm so happy I've been to the tallest building in the world, the Buju Khalifa. Some few years, about uh, some few months later, I went to the uh, Victoria Falls. And then whilst at the Victoria Falls, I saw the most amazing message that I've never, you know, seen. It was actually on the statue of Dr. David Livingstone. It was written, this is the most beautiful place that I've ever seen in England. Much more beautiful that even angels would stop for a minute and gaze. And then I said, wow, come on. We thought that the most beautiful place is the Burj Khalifa. But now look what David Livingstone is saying. The most beautiful place is the Mosi Watunya. And then I said, come on, let me call this chapter. Take me to the Mosi Watunya, not the Burj Khalifa. Paul Kagama said, we don't need to go out to find African solutions. The African solutions are here. So many times I've actually, you know, gone out of the country, I mean, gone out of Africa, thinking that African solutions will actually come there. But this chapter, we are saying that the solutions are right here. So uh, the author has tried to put that into context. Chapter 23, the author has argued with a lot of energy the magnification of Africa, total systems overhaul for development. The author has presented a case whereby... He's arguing that the problem of Africa is lack of systems because Africa is still operating using the colonial systems. We are still operating using the colonial system. 
So we have some serious problems. So this has something to do with our education, something to do with our uh, operational systems, let's say the public sector, you know, systems. Yeah, so our systems are extremely ancient, so we need to overhaul them. So the slave masters have left, but the systems are the same. So these are the systems that are tying us. So the magnification of Africa is demanding a lot. So because of lack of systems, that's why we always cry that, wow, that former president is gone. So who will be next? We get worried because we don't have, you know, the systems. If the systems are solid, you don't worry so much. Because the systems are the ones which are in control the systems. So we need to overhaul the systems because some of the systems, the systems that we are using, we are using right now, they are actually designated to benefit the colonizer. We have chapter 24, which is governance uh, re-engineering. And then we have chapter 25, rebranding Africa's universities for global competitiveness. Rebranding Africa's universities for global competitiveness. Uh, we are, the author has actually put in context uh, uh, um, Oxford University, the likes of Professor Pollard, who took advantage of the COVID, COVID pandemic, and they actually showcased that we are university. This is what a university is supposed to do. Whilst Africa, Africa's universities, we are sleeping. They didn't even think of, you know, coming up with a vaccine. That is even of a, maybe a 5% efficacy just to show up that we've been there or we are there. So replanting Africa's university. There are so many things that we need to do just to make sure that we are also on the page. Yeah, 26, the Bismarck's idealism. 27, Wang Chuking Africa. 28, leadership Sankaraism. The authors put Sankara in context because during the Magufuli studies, we have seen that Sankara and Magufuli had some common traits. So we have put them in context. Um, chapter 30, demolishing the political chameleons. Chapter 33, speeding for Africa's development. We have put the slave trade in context. Whilst uh, we are busy with the sla s s uh, being slave uh, traded, our friends we are developing in so many you know, ways. So we need to speed up for development. Uh, chapter, the, the, final chapter, the final part, uh, which is uh, creating a new Africa has suggested the strategies that Africa has to do. In one of the areas, one of the chapters which is core is cracking the black box. Cracking the black box. As you are going through the book, you are going to enjoy it and then see what it is demanded. The black box. The black box. This is the information that the governments, the politicians are trying to protect so that you don't access. The, the black box, the information, the public information that you deserve to know. And this is the breeding ground for corruption because you don't know the black box. So the politicians kind of, you know, are put in, in their, let's say, campaigns. We are going to have the access to information bill, access to information bill operationalized. Now, when the moment they get in power, they stay quiet. Why? Because they know that the moment the citizens have access to the information, that is the time that corruption is going to end completely. And this is why Bacon said at one point, knowledge is power. He didn't, have, he didn't mean it was like a, having a PhD or professorship, but he, didn't, he simply meant being able to access the information that you know. The uh, guest of honor, one of the questions which I got when I was writing the book was that uh, what is it that has motivated you to write this book? What is it that has motivated you to write this book? And then I said, a song. A song is what motivated me to write this book. I would like to just take 30 seconds of your minute, or, or, of your time, so that you listen to the song that made me to think of writing this book. Just a second of your time, I mean, 30 seconds of your time.
of the sons and daughters in the slave chambers of Emina Castle. And they were singing that song, Senzenina, what have we done to deserve this torture? What have we done to deserve this torture? And then the most touching sight was the moment when they were saying, we shall meet in heaven, Soshangana Ezulini. That was the time when they were saying bye they are passing what is called, or what was called, the door of no return. That was the point when a slave was called, John. So John had to rise up, knowing that this is the last time for me to see my friends. I will never see them anymore because I'm now taking a trickless journey to the plantations of America. So he had to wave, guy, bye, uh, bye, bye. Bye-bye, we'll never meet again. We shall meet in heaven if possible. That was the message, that was the song by the slave, uh, by, this, by this former slave some years way back. Now, in 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, a declaration which was made to set the slave free. The guest of honor, it's now about 160 years that has erupted, or that have erupted since the um, signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. However, 160 years later, the Africans are still not free. The Africans are still economic slaves. 160 years later, Africans are still having very poor roads. Africans are still having no access to portable water. 106 days later, Africans are still living in misery. 106 days later, the corruption fiesta is still the tradition of politicians and technocrats in African governments. And 106 days later, the common man, the common person has been deprived of his or her amenities. 160 years later, a common African is still not free. This is what made me to come up with a book called Africa, Magufuli and Change, so that by communicating, by imparting what is in the book, we can have a sense of direction that we should take in order to be so free. The other question which I got when I was writing the book was that why have you chosen Magufoli? Why have you chosen Magufoli? Out of all the presidents in Africa, why is it that you have chosen Magufoli? And out of all the presidents in Tanzania, why is it that you have chosen Magufoli? The guest of honor, to answer this question, I would like to ask you to be with me in this journey. And then let's go to Chato. So as we are going to Chato, let's interact with the people. And by and by, let us hear what they are actually saying. And many of them, they are communicating that Magufuli was our hero. Magufuli was so caring. Magufuli was somebody else whom we could say sent from God. I was privileged to visit Magufuli's Chateau Musorium. When I got into the Musorium, I was touched. And as I was standing, while I was facing the head of his tomb, I wish I had the powers to resurrect people. The guest of honor, I wish 
I was a Jesus Christ or the Jesus Christ so that I could shout, John, arise and show the people how it is possible to face corruption dauntlessly so that the common people benefit. I would say, John, rise up and show African leaders how you made it to stay in your tenure without visiting Europe and America. John, rise up. Show us how you put us development in Tanzania. John, rise up. I really desired having the power to resurrect, but I really lamented having none. The guest of honor, we are in a situation whereby we want to change. Everybody would like to see Africa changing. So many authors have written about books that can drive Africa into economic rebellion. But we lack the power to implement what we have written. How would I have liked John to rise up so that he should receive his flowers by himself. Flowers from Chateau, flowers from St. Grema, flowers from Gaeta, flowers from Manyala, flowers from Dar es Salaam, flowers from Zanzibar. But I had to accept a reality that death has really robbed us. The one who was determined to put Tanzania and Africa in the right direction. I know some of you might be much more interested still to say, come on, you are a Marawian, but how come that you are still much more interested with Magofoli? Now let me reveal, reveal the secret to you. When we saw Magofoli, we actually saw a bulldozer whom we knew that is going to put our leaders under pressure. Pressure that, look, your friend in Tanzania is performing, so you have to do likewise. So we know that he's a very good president. And when he died, we even wept more because we knew that our president has been lost. The book is finishing with In Search of a New Magufuli. We acknowledge a fact that Magufuli has passed on. And it is very unlikely that we can have him now because he's in charge. But we can emulate whatever, you know, he did. This book has put or has named Magufuli, or has called Magufuli different names in various uh, chapters. And those are the attributes, those are the qualities that we are looking for. And the new Magufuli is have to be us. The new Magufulis have to be our readers at that very top level. We need to be the new Magufulis. So the book has actually called Magufuli in various, uh, I mean, has given Magufuli various names. For example, a chapter, 20, a chapter 12 is calling Magufuli a, a, a star, a shining star in the darkness of neocolonialism. And chapter 13 is calling Magufuli as the no-nonsense deontologist. Chapter 14 is calling Magufuli as an intelligent listener. Chapter 15 is calling Magufuli a true patriot. Chapter 16 is calling Magufuli a business genius. Chapter 17 is calling Magufuli a challenger of bureaucracies. In chapter 18 is calling Magufuli a scorpion to the corrupt. Magufuli challenged the Tanzanians. I want you Tanzanians to believe that you have a president, a real rock. I cannot be threatened, and I am not threatened. Of course, he was a real rock. Of course, I may call him East Africa's rock of ages. In chapter 19...